Hello and welcome back to Beyond the Bells, your one-stop shop for all things Women's Wrestling Army. My name is Alyssa Marino, WWA commentator. I am joined by my very talented pal, veteran podcaster Will Washington. And I think I speak for both of us when I say we're so glad to be back with a fresh episode I... of Beyond the Bells. I know it's been it feels like it's been forever and uh, I was just thinking about the fact that it feels like it's been forever since I've talked to you I mean of course I keep up ever since the first time I found out about it about all of your serial happenings so yeah. I don't feel like I've missed out on any Alyssa Marino but yeah. uh and you've I, had still pl- go ahead I was gonna say um even still I was gonna ask you how you've been I've been doing well, um, I know you've had tons of, uh, of course, dad jokes that you've been sharing online, but you also had a bit of a busy week. So uh, why don't you catch us up with uh, some of the stuff that's been going on? Oh, yeah. I had a real busy week because, well, folks, uh, I don't know if you've been living under a wrestling wise, but uh, last weekend, uh, so of course, this being uh, September 14th, We're talking the weekend before last. There was a whole lot of wrestling that happened. A lot of it it was happening across the pond. It was happening uh, in the States. It was happening wherever you were. There was wrestling happening uh, or Labor Day, almost said Memorial Day. Labor Day weekend. There was a lot of it happening, um, including at All Out. Not going to talk about the thing you think I'm going for because that's not what this show is. Instead, (laughs) I'm actually going to talk about the fact that uh, Tony Storm, may have heard of her she's actually been competing on dynamite i believe tonight's show will be her fifth straight week competing on dynamite or performing dynamite i should say but she actually became the interim aew women's world champion uh winning what i thought was an excellent and it was in a really tough spot so for the spot it was in especially an excellent four-way that also featured hikaru shida uh and Britt baker and jamie Hayter. um and uh during the uh, media scrum she talked about Um, to be the champion, to be the leader of all that, despite the pressure. Um, It really is a huge honor for me. I fell in love with this locker room. I fell in love with it on my first day. Uh, She said, the moment I walked in, now I'm the leader of it, and I can't wait to get in there with every single one of them and learn from each and every one of them. Um, And I was just really happy to see that match take place. I thought, like I said, it was in a tough spot because the the crowd, I don't think anybody anticipated the way the crowd was going to be before that match, but I thought that they did a great job winning the crowd back. Excellent stuff. I was in that building uh, at the Now Arena because we also saw uh, Jade Cargill uh, successfully defend her title against um, Athena. And uh, that match also hard hitting. She talked about uh, later on that she's bored and has no competition here, which sparked tons of conversation from potential challengers on her. uh, uh, It just it did. It sparked a lot of. There's a lot of talent out there and Jade Cargill on her way to her 40 and O with the TBS women's championship. Mm -hmm. Um, The question now is who to finally put that one in that loss column for her. I don't think they're on the horizon. Well, and now that actually, that brings up a question on my end. In your opinion, who would you like to see from Mm -hmm. the women's wrestling army roster possibly challenge for the TBS championship? So I've been posed this question once before. <laughs> they People have asked me specifically, who do I think is going to be the one and Jade Cargill's uh, in the loss column? And it's, it's funny that you said who from Women's Wrestling Army, because to be truthful with you, the answer is all the same. It's Willow Nightingale. Oh. I want to see... <laughs> I want to see Willow absolutely be the one to and I don't know where it happens, when it happens, but I feel like if anybody can give me that field moment, that's who it's going to be. And so that's that's my hope and wish for that championship. I, I mean, the babe with the power does wield an awful lot of power and uh, could be that it is enough power to unseat Jade Cargill? I don't know, but I like where your head's at, Will. I like where it's at. Uh, Now, in other other news uh, 
out and about. Uh, we did see that Mickey James is on her last rodeo. Uh, she is doing some open challenges to earn her way to a title opportunity. But if she loses anywhere along the way, it is the end of the journey for her. So thoughts on this? Um, one, I thought that promo she cut getting, I thought that like, it was one of those things that you could tell everybody in that building was just glued to all of her words. And I was, I thought she looked amazing. Um, just everything about that, uh, I was into. And honestly, I think this is a, an exciting way to continue the mission and, uh, really add some stakes to pretty much any match she has going forward. A thousand percent. And I think she's just such an icon that it, anytime she speaks, I will listen. So I think that, yes, it, amping up the, the, the energy even more um, and, and re really raising the stakes here. Uh, now, we also have this week's episode of WWA available on Brand Army for subscribers and dropping today for free on Pro Wrestling TV, like right after this. Go watch that. Uh, we have the female with attitude Maserati taking on submission sniper Jordan Blade. La creme de la creme Ashley Dumboise in action against the Afropunk Trisha Dora. And a whew, heavy strike fest between the kick demon Janai Kai and Queen Aminata. But I mean, speaking of the royal one herself, let's just jump right in and welcome our guest for tonight's episode of Beyond the Bells, the one and only reigning queen of women's wrestling army, the African woman wrestler, Queen Aminata. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks Hi. for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? I'm exhausted, but I'm okay. <laughs> We're going to get into that because I feel like you are a very enterprising person that always has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the, the first thing I would actually like to touch on is... I've noticed this during the last WWA taping in Chicago, that you're very big on viral TikToks, dance trends. I, I saw you recording some with some fellow WWA roster members. How, how did you find yourself getting into that? I, I mean, to be honest, I just like to have fun. So we, we travel a lot for work and it's a lot demanding physically, mentally, emotionally. So while I'm having fun, if I can pull somebody in and have fun with them, then why not? You know, just a big happy family with a lot of fun and whatever we need to do to just get through the day or the night. It's definitely a good oh my God, that's I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's amazing. And, and I, I wanted to ask you, by the way, and I think we, we might be overlapping a little bit because I think there might be a little bit of lag between us. And I apologize for that on my behalf. Um, what I, I, I did want to ask you. Um, so uh, shout out to my my co-host over on uh, Graps, the Mr. Righteous Reg. But he does a list every year. Uh, the Black Wrestling's 500 that just dropped um, this week alongside. It always goes with the um pw 500 and, and you of course ranked in the top 100 this year um you fell number 90 i don't know if you got a chance to see that yeah i did um somebody tagged me and my own trainer um <laughs> sent it to me and i was like okay thanks thank you guys <laughs> so yeah <laughs> i know the answer yeah no, I, I was just really excited uh, about that before. i mean it's something exciting. I get it. And honestly, before I started wrestling, I didn't know anything about, you know, like numbers of like black female or male wrestlers or this and that. I didn't know anything about that. All I wanted was to just make a name for myself and put Africa as, you know, like not only, hey, it's just Africa, but we do have African male wrestlers and African women wrestler and if I'm number one or the first one or the second one, then that's that's my goal. So if my name is part of, you know, the 500 or something big, I'm always thankful. But that's that's not. I'm not there yet. You know, I'm not even close to my goal. So it's just part of the journey. I'm thankful, but at the same time, I'm just gonna not scream everywhere like, "Hey, I'm part of the you know the hundred or whatever." So 
in my head, I'm always number one. That's all that matters. Which, which kind of brings me to a quote that you had shared on social media. I think it was under one of your pictures. It says, I'm not overconfident. I just madly believe in me. What's kind of the significance of that quote for you? <laughs> wow. Um, well, my gimmick is, I mean, you guys know I don't do a lot of podcasts. And if you want to know anything about me, like just, just go on my social media. And I like small quotes like that here and there so people can actually, you know, think and sit down and be like, why did she say that? You know, like, why is she so over herself or why she thinks she's better than me and that and I always tell them it's not about me being overconfident it's not about me you know telling people hey I'm better than you or this and that but it's just just the fact that I had to believe in me first before every single thing that's happening right now I still have to keep believing me because behind closed doors people don't see what I go through you know on my like daily basis and when I travel with family with kids and here and there it's so much that I have to remind myself through my post that you got this <laughs> today you might not have it you're like over you know I don't know underconfident or something like that but you have it so I go through my own post sometimes to just motivate myself so if I you know if some of those posts that happen to motivate somebody or hurt somebody else's feelings then that's on you. Get your own stuff together because I'm good. <laughs> I hear that. Well, and I wanted to ask you uh, a little bit, um, kind of going back to um, what it means for you to um, to be the African woman wrestler, as uh, as goes your tagline, and what it means to um, to carry that torch and to to. Um, to have that representation? You know, growing up, my dad always told me that there is a first time for everything. And in a sense where, like, for him, he was talking about, hey, we got to keep family going, you know. My dad didn't go to school, so he made sure that we went to school. We were, like, highly educated. I have a master's degree in private international law before I decided to move in America. He worked so hard for us to have every single thing that he never dreamed of having because he, like, he's not even from the country. He's all the way from the village and he's a mechanic and he worked so hard and, you know, paid for a private school and then move us to France to go to school and finally I moved here. So, it, like, there's something in my mind that always says, okay, he did that. So what else can I do to tell him that? I think I can do better than you, even though I know you're good, but I can do way better than you. And now I have girls and we still, I mean, my girls are good, like, you know, financially, I would say, I'm not gonna hide it, but I still wanna show them that it's not only about money, you know, it's about what you can bring to the world. What can you change? You know, what can you do that is different? And for me, I love sports, so, in Africa, growing up, I couldn't go to the gym. Like, it was so expensive, you know what I mean? And even though I could afford it, sometimes I was a little shy. Like, it's just like, I'm just a woman. I'm just there to have kids, go to school, and be behind my husband. And I'm like, no, I, I can't do that. I got to change that. And that's what I'm doing right now. My dad doesn't agree with me, but he, he, he supports me, you know, so he respects me. And... I love that about him. So we have a lot of work to do, but I think we're, we, I'm starting good. So one step at a time. Yeah. One step at a time to yeah. change the world. Changing the yeah. world is a big thing. So yes, baby steps. Uh, but I mean, you are also, you even mentioned a, a few countries already, a world traveler. Uh, have you had any experiences and any significant connection to other places that you've visited or lived in in your travels? Um, well, I travel a little bit, but like I said, I if I had to define, like I, I would say Africa. I was made in Africa, grew up in France. Like mentally, that's when I learned to like, hey, you gotta work, you gotta earn these things. You know what I mean? And came here, oh. You can afford everything, but you actually are nothing because I don't speak the language. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, everything is completely different. Then I learned that. Now I'm a wrestler. Then I 
moved to Japan where I'm like, okay, I thought I had it in America, but actually I don't. So it's just, you learn a little bit more from everywhere you go. And I try to put all those together, you know what I mean? And make it me, make it my own and be me. So I don't know if that answers to your questions, but I can't really say, okay, I like this one or this one was a little bad because even in bad things, you can learn good things from it. So you are the, it's the sum of all its parts kind of thing. Yeah, Every place you've gone go. has made you part of you. Thousand percent. That makes sense. You got it. You, you should translate <laughs> for me. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so I wanted to, to touch on something you just said. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So you said that was a private international law degree? Yeah, private international law. Okay, I have to at least get one piece of information that I probably wouldn't know about Maybe. in general, private international law. Okay. Please, just, well, just any, one piece any, of, any, anything. <laughs> any one little fact I wouldn't know. About private international law? Yes. I don't practice. I quit law to be a wrestler. <laughs> so I have to take my bar to actually go. I have to go back to school for like at least six months. If it's Europe, in America, I don't know, to take my bar. And that's when I was like, I'm not paying all that money in America. I'm just going to be a wrestler. <laughs> that yeah, but, rules. um if I decide to take the bar and everything, I work with private, um, you know, companies or private, like, I don't know how business is because I didn't want to work for the public. And my goal was to return back home and work for my dad. That was the main goal because he was paying so much money for the people to help him and they would steal money here and there. But I guess they're still, I mean, they're still stealing because I'm still here in America trying to be <laughs> a professional superstar wrestler. So, yeah. But I, I, in a way, however your journey has led you to where you are now, I, I mean, I, for one, I think we can say we're very happy that you're here and you are part of the wrestling world. I think you're, you, you are an incredible star and, and you shine here, especially in WWA. Um, and, and I want to touch back because we were talking about language a little bit. And correct me if I'm wrong, you speak four different languages? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. Um, now, I think I might have overheard a bit of it when I had to get between you and Brooke Valentine when you guys were fighting yeah. a little bit. <laughs> but I'm actually wondering, uh, can you trash talk a, an opponent like we just saw uh, Janai Kai? Can you trash talk someone in four different languages? Yes, I can. Perfect. Good. Yeah. Are we going to see any more of that, do you think, along the way? <laughs> you know, it's funny because... Um... When I get too, not angry, but like when I really want to say something and it's so hard for me to say it in English, it just comes out straight and it comes out snappy. And I'm like, thank God they don't know what I just said because, mm, you know what I mean? But I, like, I have to translate in my head in English and it's, it's kind of hard. I mean, I've been here eight years, but it's still hard. You know, English is not like an easy language, honestly. Mm -mm. But I'm trying my best, okay? So, yeah. When when you do get to that point, uh, what's your default? What what language do you go to when you get heated and there's no other way to express it? Oh, it's definitely my dad's native language. So, so I mix those way in French all the time. Even with my kids, sometimes I just curse them and I look at them like, I know you understood what I said, but yeah, that's exactly what I said. I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to know. That's the language of your heart. <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, bringing it back around to WWA, uh, who would you say has been uh, the most fun member of the WWA roster to collab with? To collab with, you said? Yes. Hmm. Well, I haven't worked with many people, but so far I would say Janai, Janae. How do you say her name? It doesn't Janai. Janai. It's just take it however. She knows. <laughs> it's Janai. Um, yeah, because I just felt it, you know. So there's, I, there's, it's just something that I cannot explain. But so far, it's it's her. So yeah, and I respect her too as a worker. So good job, good job, girl. 
I feel like it takes a lot to get that kind of accolade from the queen, Aminata. So that's, I think, well earned from Janai Kai. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Not only in wrestling, in, it's just in general. Now, that that actual match, I you know, obviously we were able to be there on on the call for it, and there was a certain electricity between the two of you. It was it was indescribable. Uh, but what can fans expect? from that match when it airs tonight on Pro Wrestling TV? Um, honesty and leaving all in in the ring. I think the mm -hmm. fan can see that. And that's the goal every time I work. I, I don't care if I'm heel or baby. And I don't care if I'm, you know, the big guy or the small guy, like, in the ring. All I care about is just my fan being connected and the fact that I'm there, like, being me, you know what I mean? Just, I don't want to do what somebody's telling me to do. I just want to do what, how I feel it and how I sense it. And it's just, it's just something that I cannot explain. But I think you can explain it way better than me because, I mean, again, words. But, yeah, the fans can definitely sense a lot of things, but just keep those things in mind. That was a, yeah, it was a very real and authentic expression between the two of you i think is a maybe a nice way of putting it you beat the hell out of each other it was brutal <laughs> we did to the point where um i'm glad cameras were not behind the scenes because after that match actually before the match um my daughter's sick and i couldn't talk to her that day so i was telling my husband hey just take care of everything we'll talk later because i have a match coming up and you know it's a lot of pressure on show days they try to leave me alone but there are some things in life that you just have to deal with all at the same time. So I kept all my emotions in and I went in that match just mainly focused on what I was doing because I have to be able to, you know, separate those two words together. And then after the match, as soon as I came back, everything hit at the same time and I just crashed. I couldn't talk. I couldn't breathe right. I just went and sat in, men's, in the men's bathroom. I just started crying and I couldn't breathe. And Maria was like, just one breath at a time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like so hard for me to breathe and catch up. So after everything, you know, and I was like, okay, now I'm okay. I don't know why this happened. This is the second time this happened ever to me, but this is when I know I need a break. I've been going way too hard. I need a break. So yeah, that match definitely was, <laughs> yeah. It was sure a main event, so y'all can enjoy it. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Good, good. <laughs> and and how, do you, how do you find that balance, by the way, of um, juggling? You mentioned, uh, you've mentioned your, your kids. You've mentioned um, the, the travel. Uh, and, and, of course, we, we've seen you all around. We've seen you um in wwa we uh, i mentioned to you right at the top of this i literally just watched you in AEW 15 minutes before we jumped on here um we've we've been seeing you all around how how do you find the balance and how do you take the time to wind down when you need to i don't know honestly you have some questions that you can't get the answer to you know you just go with the flow but one thing i know um I try to stay as positive as possible, mind my own goddamn freaking business, and try to make money because people can lie to me and you know deceive me, but my money will never do that to me. So, yeah, <laughs> you're laughing, but literally this is me all day, every day, you know. Because if I'm not wrestling, I just work out or go to work and come back home, you know. So. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you are, you are a businesswoman. Um, so, and, and we have, uh, we have talked about a lot of the kind of big opportunities that you had come up. Is there a particular way or anything you do any, you know, pre-match rituals that help you kind of prepare or center yourself before some of the major opportunities you've had in your career? I listen to music. I usually listen to um, back home music or um some music that i really really like and enjoy because you have some music that are like really weird but to me it sounds different in my head it helps me refocus and you know focus on what i'm doing right there right now you know because i have like 
billion things happening in my head and I'm like, I need to focus on one thing and one thing only. And it doesn't always work. 90, 99.9% .9 of the time it works, but that 1% of the time when it doesn't work, I just, it's just frustrating, you know? And I just say, you know what? God says today I have to experience frustration, take it and then go with the flow. So, but I do listen to music a lot and now I stretch a lot too. I gotta be smart about that. <laughs> And that's all. It's a good balance. I'm trying. I should start eating cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Part of every well-balanced <laughs> breakfast, <laughs> meal, wrestling match. I don't know. But yeah, cereal makes everything better. So yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah, if you want to like specialize in, in, in the things that Alyssa and I uh, are our expertise you can uh go with cereal and then find yourself telling dad jokes all the time at that point oh, you have God. mastered beyond the bells that's true that's too much i will let you guys do that okay <laughs> i will stick with like my TikTok and staying juicy that's all staying juicy and yeah. and i'll have you know that uh lenny leonard always would ask me what <laughs> juicy meant i was like you yeah. know just watch, just watch and learn. So <laughs> that's all. That's all. That's all. You gotta have fun. <laughs> There's never a shortage of it. And uh, and we thank you so very much for, for taking the time, for chatting with us. And uh, is there anything that is on your mind of something that you hope for the future of Women's Wrestling Army? Well, I have to start by saying like, you know, um, Maria is an amazing person and then I've met Bobby. He's just, he's just Bobby. Bobby's just Bobby. <laughs> and we love Bobby for who he is. But, yes. um, you know, we have to thank them because anybody can open a wrestling company, but a lot of people um, don't put a lot of effort, you know, into it. So we have to keep appreciating them for what they do. And the road is not always beautiful and less bumpy, you know. It gets hard. It gets hard before it gets beautiful. But no matter what, I just want all the girls, you know, that work already for WWA or want to work for WWA to keep trying their best. Because if you want to be the best, you have to work hard and you have to do what others are not willing to do, you know. And let's let's just be happy and supportive of each other. And I hope we just keep doing great things, you know, because the locker room was amazing. Every single person was willing to give their best and support each other. And that's all that matters. And people can bump heads here and there, and that's okay. Stuff happens in life. And that's the only way you will learn and grow. So, yeah, backstage people, you guys, like, you know, cameraman, everybody. So I, I thank every single person. Like, from my point of view, like, anybody who takes a chance on me, literally, I, I just cannot stop saying thank you because... I came from nothing, so I just have to keep saying thank you. So, yeah, good luck to Women Wrestling Army. And, yeah, I don't like losing, so give me great opponents because, yeah, I got to keep that there. <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> just saying. Well, it is – Well, yeah. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just going to say probably the same thing you were going to say, which is that it's been an absolute pleasure having you here um and we wish you the absolute best of luck in all things pro wrestling especially here in women's wrestling army thank you very much guys see you guys soon i hope so yes indeed take care you too bye bye what a journey wow what a journey like the things i absolutely didn't know are you yeah. kidding me um and uh i just think that uh, she stays humble about it, but she is a superwoman in, in every way, shape, and form, and I love that. A thousand percent, and uh, yeah, within as incredible of a a start and a middle and everything of her story, I am so excited to see what just keeps happening next for uh, Queen Aminata and for Women's Wrestling Army. So you got to make sure if you are listening or watching at home, you are following us on all the socials. You're catching full episodes of uh, of WWA on Pro Wrestling TV or subscribing for early access and exclusive content on Brand Army. Uh, you get to see the episodes before anybody else. Uh, we also have really big news coming this week. 
when our founders, Maria Canellas Bennett and Bobby Cruz, are going to be visiting Busted Open Radio on Friday morning at 8 a.m., 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and, and Bobby said that there's... I was going to say that's 8 a.m. my time. Yeah, that's... I was just, I was thinking <laughs> we're on the same page, but yes, 10 a.m. Eastern this Friday, uh, Bobby shared that it was going to be big news uh, regarding our next set of tapings and an apparently historic location, a new hire, lots of cool stuff being revealed. So keep your eye on all the socials for new updates. Well, Washington, what do you got for me before we wrap up this episode? Um, Well, speaking of the aforementioned Maria Canales Bennett, she'll also be uh, actually, later that day, I'm actually interviewing uh, Maria. She's going to be jumping over with me on uh, on Grapsity this week. I haven't had a chance to talk with her since I started Grapsity, and I've been doing interviews with Maria going back to 2010. So uh, this is actually going to be a fun one here. So there's there's lots of stuff going on with me. It, follow me, William RBR. I host five podcasts a week at this stage, uh, but exciting stuff. Super duper exciting. Uh, follow me at AYY underscore Marino on the socials uh, for just me talking about cereal and stuff like that. It's just really it's great. <laughs> it's it's really great stuff. It's genuinely like awesome content that I actually watch in my spare time. Thank you. We'll come up with some good dad jokes together later on. And uh, <laughs> to our friends at home, if you're watching on YouTube for wrestling, we thank you for joining us. And we cannot wait to see you again on the next episode of Beyond the Bells. <laughs>